Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we are making the Paul Sellers router kit. I know, another router kit. Let's dive in. So, some of you know what this is. This is the Paul Sellers router playing kit. I ordered it a while ago and it's finally come. So today, we're gonna have fun with it. So inside it comes with the iron, a strap to hold it back, different threaded inserts, and then the screw bolts that can go on as well as nuts underneath. So we're gonna make this out of Ipe. Man, I really wanna get back to white oak sometime, but uh, this Ipe is actually really nice stuff for this. It is a very, very durable wood and will last for a sole a very long time. The problem is it's gonna take a lot more work to actually shape down. Uh, it is a very tough and resilient wood. It had this nice arch in the front that I thought would match the the, the designed shape on the Paul Sellers uh, plans. And I am gonna be following these plans as closely as possible. Uh, if I were making it just for myself, I would probably make it a little bit differently. And I'll talk about those as we go along. But honestly, I wanted to just follow the plans and go along the same way. Using this straight block to draw um, perfectly vertically uh, rather than using a drill press is actually a really nice method. You drill square through a block and then you can use that to drill all of your holes in the future. We're going to drill one large hole through the middle and this will be what the blade protrudes through so that you can actually see what you're working on. And it was around this point I realized, wait a second, I forgot to trim this down to the proper thickness um, because I want to follow the plans exactly and it requires something to be a little a little thinner. Um, I probably would have just left it the way it was for my own use, but to make it a little bit thinner makes it a little easier to see through the hole. So we're going to mark that out, trim it down with the scrub plane, and bring it down to the final thickness. Now that we have that, we need to make one more block that goes on top. And I was going to make that out of another piece of Ipe, but then I saw this curly maple and thought, yeah, let's put a little style into this. Uh, so we're going to cut out a block of, of curly maple. Now the plans require you to make this rectangular block um, a little longer than the design so you have something to hold on to. And that works out really, really well, um, unless you're trying to save material. Uh, so I ended up cutting mine uh, precisely to the finished length rather than making it a little longer. That makes it a little bit harder to hold on to when you get to some of the shaping, uh, but I found it, it, was, it was useful for the way I work. Um, so everyone's a little bit different. We need to cut a, a dado on this for the blade to fit into. And this is what's actually going to house the blade and allow it to um, slide down and up. So we're going to cut it to the width of the blade itself. We want this to be centered in the block or centered in what will be the block. So we can cut down the other side and then chop it down. And then we can pare it back exactly where it needs to be until that iron slides in there. Uh, this one was actually right about where I wanted it to be. I needed to uh, file it a little bit wider in the end, but uh, you'll see that. Next thing we need to do is cut this at a 45 degree angle. Uh, so we, we made this whole wedge so that it's easier to hold on to and cut through. But now we're going to cut all the way down and we're just going to be left with this little piece, which seems a bit odd, but it's actually a really good way of holding on to all of this and working through it. So that piece that fell off, that's the one we're keeping. We need to smooth out the bottom so that we have a nice good gluing surface because this needs to then be glued onto the, the main body. Speaking of the main body, let's do some shaping on there. It calls for a curved arch in the front. And so to actually shape that off, uh, we are going to cut down and then chisel back out. I thought about bringing in the, the compass plane for this, but it's ever so slight curve on this. And I found it was actually just easier to hit it with the spoke shave and get it very close to where it should be. On top of that, popping off these chunks is always a very enjoyable process, and it is still surprising to me every time I do it because it's just, it's fun and intriguing, and you can get very, very close with the chisel bevel down and just ride along getting close to that line, and this is enjoyable. This is something that I could do for a long time in the shop and still have a lot of fun, and that's the whole reason for the shop. Once we get down close to the line, I can bring in the spoke shave and then refine it to right where I want it to be. I want to have a nice, clean curve. We're going to be rounding over all of the corners and uh, keeping with the same design. A good hand stitch rasp makes this so fast and so easy. And then we can break all the corners with a file. And from this point on, it's just the aesthetics on the body, getting it right about where we want. And the body is almost done, but we need to actually create the rest of the, the top frame. This will be what holds the iron and the adjusting mechanism. Uh, the design from Paul Sellers has this all rounded and smoothed out, and it is an aesthetic that he does very, very well. And I love the, the look on that. It gives it a, a nice modern feel with still some elegance of the past. We want to make sure we knock off that top edge so that it is not sharp. 
we're going to be gluing this in place. Uh, Paul actually has it with a couple nails coming up through the bottom to hold it in place so it doesn't slide around. But if you put a little bit of salt in it, it actually will do just about the same thing. So I ended up doing that rather than trying to pound nails into the ePay. This will get clamped in place uh, right along that back edge. And then the router iron, you can see, will slide down through that. And then we have to cut out a little bit more for it to fit into the main body. The kit provides three of these screw bolts, and so we need to pre-drill the holes so they don't split everything out. So they need to be separated for this frame to hold onto and up the body the same thickness as the iron. The plans give you all of those measurements as well. So we can drill two holes through the front and one hole in the back. This one in the back uh, will be where the adjuster bolt goes in. Again, we're using this uh, same frame to keep everything uh, true and 90 degrees to the face that they're running into. We're going to cut in a little bit more for the body where the iron will fit into and so we can chop in and then pair out and then chop in and pair out until we get a nice clean bed for the iron to sit on all the way down. And then we can test the iron, make sure it fits, make sure there's any adaptions in this. I tried to keep it really nice and tight. You can see there's no wobble in it side to side. Um, in the end I'll come back and remove it a little bit more. Uh, we're going to open up the mouth a bit more on the front edge because the iron would come down and hit it. We want to see some space uh, in front of that so you can actually see what you're cutting. So for the screws, um, Paul actually has them just chucked up in a drill, wax them, and drive them in. And that actually works really, really well. Uh, I think I would have preferred doing it with the double nut process of getting them in a little ways and then ratcheting them down in. Um, I found a couple times where the drill started to slip on me. Uh, and it just was it was just something about the the, the, the chuck that, uh, yeah, each their own. Try your own method. We're going to sharpen this iron up and get it really, really close. It came very, very sharp. Uh, just need a little bit of honing on there and... We're ready to take this thing for a test drive. You can see now how the nut on the back will drive it down farther. And because it's at 45 degrees, it gives you a very fine adjustment on there. And uh, with a, a good bit of the, the nut moving, the blade only extends a little bit more. So it is a, a really good way to sneak up on your line and get exactly what you want. And uh, once we make sure that this is exactly where we want it to be and modify modifications on it, then we can move on to finishing. I found that I needed to open it up a little bit wider. It was just a hair too tight, and that was causing it to pinch on the adjustment nut. So uh, take a little bit of time on that and make sure that, that is, uh, uh, it actually fits and runs nicely. You want that adjustment nut to, uh, to run up and down the stud in parallel with the iron. We're going to coat this thing in boiled linseed oil. Uh, Paul uses shellac on his. He loves working with shellac, and it really brings out a good finish on there. Um, I uh, would actually prefer it to be a little bit more matte, so I like to uh, do boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Smother it in paste wax, let it uh, soak up as much as it wants, then wipe it off and polish off the excess paste wax, and uh, you're good to go. Put it all together, and there you go. We have a router plane. Uh, Paul's design actually had two knobs to go on it. I generally don't like working with knobs, but again, personal preference. Maybe I'll put them on in the future. But there you go. Lots of fun. So there you have it. The Paul Sellers router kit. This is probably the 12th, 13th different router design that I've made over the years. And I really like it. It's, it's an interesting design, especially with it having it 45 degrees, you have a much finer adjustment in and out uh, per thread. So it works out very, very well. Um, it is a little bit more difficult of a router plane design to make in comparison to a lot of the others, but it comes out very well. So I may be putting out a video here uh, comparing a few different designs and showing some of the pros and cons of each one. Uh, if you'd like to see it, let me know. But I like this one. If you'd like to see where you can buy the plans, I'll leave links to those down below. And if you have any other questions, comments, ideas, thoughts, snide remarks, throw those down below as well. That does help out. And there's a whole bunch of people who just put comment down below, down below, because that helps out the channel. Thank you. Anytime you hit like, comment, share, subscribe, that helps us out. And if you want to take it even farther, you can become a patron. All of the names over here, those are all patrons on Patreon. Between patrons and members, people who have clicked the join button and the little like button down below, uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So thank you for that. If you would like to help us out, keep us going, keep the lights on, uh, well, you don't do click the buttons because we are completely sponsored by you. So thank you. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Router planes, or to me, deja vu. Didn't I make one of these before?